Okay, this is Dr. Holt. This is another University of Texas problem. This one you have a 4.13 kilogram block sitting here. It's placed upon a 9.57 kilogram block. A horizontal force of 63.3 is, is applied. So let's go ahead and write that down as 63.3 newtons going this way. It's applied to the 9.57. Um, this one's tied to the wall. The coefficient kinetic friction between all moving surfaces is going to be 0 0.111. There's friction between here and here. We want to determine the tension and the string. All right, to find the tension and the string, draw yourself a force diagram or free body diagram of this. So to do that, I would have the mass times gravity coming down. I'll go ahead and label all this real quick. Oops. Let me draw the arrows first, the vectors, and then I'll talk about everything. All right. So this would be our tension. There has to be some friction coming this way. And this would be the friction that the 9.57 is causing on the 4.13. This would be my tension here. Now this value here, this is going to be the force of gravity. This is going to be the earth on the 4.13. And that's going to be nothing more than 4.13 times 9.8. Sorry, that looks like a 9.5. It's 9.8 right there. So we take 4.13 times 9.8. It gives me a value of 40.474. And since this is University of Texas, we'll go ahead and write down all the decimals. This would be my normal force. And the normal force is going to be the normal that the 9.57 is pushing up on the 4.13. And that would also equal to... 40.474 newtons. Let me put newtons down here too. All right. <clears throat> now, since this object is tied, this object cannot accelerate at all. So this object has to be in equilibrium. And we know the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.111. So can we not say by definition and that the friction force is always going to equal to normal times mu. We know our normal is going to be 40.474. We know mu is going to be 0.111. We run that number times 0.111. That gives us a value of 4.4926. So now if we go back and we, we can sum the forces in the x-direction. Set so equal to mass times acceleration in the x-direction. We know the acceleration here goes to zero. So can we not say from what we have right here is that if friction minus T must equal zero. And then you'll get the tension as 4.4926. All right. So that's how you're going to get the answer to part 11. Now part 12 asks you, so this is 11 here, this is 12. 12 says determine the magnitude of the acceleration of 9.57. Again, this all just comes back down to good free body diagrams or force diagrams. I'll come over here and draw it. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have two forces coming down. I'll talk about what those are going to be. All right. First thing is I had the force normal here of the 9.57 pushing onto the um, can't read my numbers. 9.57 pushing on the 4.13. 
So here I'll have the force at the 4.13 is pushing onto the 9.57. And that value there has got to be the same because these are force pairs, and that's 40.474. Four seven four, and I'll color code that. That's a force pair there, and a force pair right here, equal and opposite. Uh, shut that down. Sorry about that. All right. Next one is to go ahead and find out what the force of gravity is going to be here. So the force of the gravity is going to cause the Earth onto the nine point five seven. It's going to be equal to the mass, the 9.57 times 9.8. So 9.57 times 9.8 equals 93.786. Okay, this is going to be your force normal. Now your force normal is going to be the sum of these two forces. So if I add those two values together, I will get 134.26 newtons. All right, now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and calculate the frictional force. I'm going to calculate the frictional force right here. That's going to be the normal force times 0.111. And again, it's going to resist the direction. So it's going to go back this way right here. So I take the total value times 0.111. Ah, shoot. I got one second. Times 0.111. That gives me 14.90903. Now I'm going to shorten this vector because I got this proportionally. It's too long. Not that it affects the problem, but it should be shorter. Now, the only thing you're missing is you have another force pair here. You had this one. Let me get a different color right here. And we said that one was 4.48. Now, that's the force that the 9.57 is pushing on the 4.13. The 4.13 must push back the opposite direction. <clears throat> so we'll have another vector coming off this direction here. And that value would be, I'll go to the black, 4.4926 newtons. Okay, and I should put newtons in every one of these, actually. I'm not very good at that as far as consistency goes. All right, now I would, technically you should shorten this vector so it's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter than that. Now, you other force that you have, you have one other force. <coughs> I believe that was given in the problem as 63.3. So now, at this point, can we not just say the summation of forces in the x must equal to mass times acceleration to in the x? I will get minus 4.4926 minus 14.903 plus 63.3 must equal the mass, which is 9.57 times the acceleration in the x direction. So we'll add all those up, and that gives us the acceleration of 4.5877 meters per second squared. All right, so that's how you work that problem. Again, the important thing is to use um, good force diagrams and be very methodical about your approach. Now, the only thing I should have probably done here, I should have went and marked that one as the, uh, the force pair here. This one and this one are force pairs. <clears throat> All right, best of luck with this problem.